risk factors for Petrin's disease and Lederhose disease. So there are many different risk factors for Lederhose disease, or I've mainly looked at here to Petrin's disease as there's a lot more information about this. Um, just having either of these two diseases increases your risk of developing the other disease. Um, equally of course with having a family history of either of these diseases increases your risk of getting either of these diseases. It's also increased by being diabetic, excessive alcohol consumption, smoking, suffering from epilepsy and as you get older you also have an increased risk. So family history is quite varied as to what you see. So looking at this chart here, uh, this is one I produced previously, uh, if you look say at uh, person number nine and look at their their children and grandchildren, you can see there's a very high level of Dupetrins and Lederhose. But if you look at say F and G and all of their um, children and grandchildren and so on, there, there's very few cases there. So it's a bit mixed as to where does it come from and how does it get there, but there clearly is a case of if you have a family history of this disease, then you've got an increased risk of getting it yourself. Equally, if we look at my family history, there isn't any basically. There's no disease history in my family at all. There's just me there with Lederhose disease. So, although genetics may be important for this, it's not necessarily a requirement. You don't have to have a family history in order to be susceptible to getting these diseases. So diabetes has been looked into a lot and so one example I've looked at from 1977 and there's lots of papers saying yes there's a link here so whether it's between um, diabetes um, itself or whether it's just time with diabetes it's not exactly known um, but what has been looked at so looking at this 1977 paper um, is if you take control group and a diabetic group and you sort of look at them at side by side for Dupetrin. So I've got yellow faces here and all the yellow faces are people that are in the left hand side diabetic or in the right hand side the control group. Um, but what you then do is you screen these for Dupetrins and what they found is that in the control group you actually have around or even below 1% Dupetrin, which is the pink face there, while if you then look in the diabetic group, you've got nearly 18% that have Dupetrin. So clearly what this shows is that there is a massively increased risk of you developing Dupetrin or Lederhose if you are diabetic. So this clearly is something which you should at least keep an eye out for if you're diabetic and you know, get it looked at and confirmed if you do have it. So, excessive alcohol consumption which doesn't apply to me as I don't drink, well, and certainly many people. So, again, it's another one of these factors where if you drink excessively, you increase your chances, but drinking excessively doesn't guarantee you're going to get Dupuytrens or Lederhose. <clears throat> so, both sides here have actually been argued. Um, so, in this first one here, um, they looked at the amount of alcohol that was drunk by uh, Dupetrin's patients and non Dupetrin's patients. And so as you can see the levels here are actually quite similar in that the level of heavy, moderate or non drinkers in Dupetrin's patients and non Dupetrin's patients was very similar. So this suggests that there isn't really a link between it because you don't you would expect to see a much higher level of moderate and he especially heavy drinkers um, in Dupetrin patients, but you don't. Uh, so, this, this suggests that there's no link. However, if we then look in one of the other cases here, so this was a bit of a review looking at all these predisposing factors, and it's, if you look in, I put alcoholics, but it's just heavy drinkers, and um, using these smiley faces again. So based on the control group that we saw last time, although it's not necessarily a valid way of looking at it, they, I didn't see any control data on looking at this. In the alcoholic that they looked at here, they actually saw that there was 66% um, 
chance of having the features. This is a huge increase and certainly seems to negate anything said in the previous paper because this is clearly a massive link. So there's also epilepsy. So epilepsy has been linked again for quite some time but it's been linked in a different way. So a lot of people have said that taking the epilepsy medication can predispose you to get into depletion rather than actually having the epilepsy itself. I haven't found a definitive answer for this and so I'm just going to show what I've come across. So there was this first paper here that I came across published in 1999 uh, where there was just looking at a single patient to be fair and this single patient had dupetrins and laid a hose where there was onset after the taking of the anti-epilepsy medication and it developed very quickly and it was seemed at least in this case like it was a response to the use of the anti-epilepsy medication so this sort of you know puts in a bit of background to say that hey, this, this link could exist so there have been more detailed studies done so in this paper here they look in two different centers and they see if you see a 15% background level which obviously is much higher than the seen in the previous reports but obviously they could be looking at an older age group which as we'll show later makes a huge difference or they could be looking at somewhere where there's a high genetic predisposition for these diseases so it's not surprising if you take certain groups of people you're going to get different levels of background but in the first um, centre they looked at they actually saw that there was no increased risk in the epilepsy sufferers. However, in a second test centre, they saw an increase up to about 40% compared to the 15% in the control group. So again, this does suggest that there's some link. Um, whether there is or not, slightly more debatable, but there has have clearly been instances where there's an increased risk of getting beta hose or dupetrins, um, certainly dupetrins, um, when you're either epileptic or you're taking um, epilepsy medication. So this is certainly something that again should be taken into account um, and there has been another paper. And so this is actually an old one, um, so it's, this one's actually open access so anyone can have a look at this. And here I'm again using the control group from the 15% because they actually see that 56% epilepsy patients here are suffering and that also it develops quicker in patients on, this, on the medication and that there's a correlation between length of time on this medication and disease progression though of course the longer you've been on the medication the older you are so the more risk you have of developing it anyway but certainly there seems to be evidence that epilepsy definitely does affect your chances of having dupetrins so age is the last thing I'm going to cover. Um, we all age and one of the things that increases with age is your chances of having depletion. So in this paper here they actually looked at smoking, vibrations, alcohol and diabetes uh, all on the risk if you're developing depletions and this is in nearly 100,000 people so it was a very big group looked at. And this bar chart clearly shows um, an increasing risk. So on the left hand side going up there we have the percentage in that age range that have dupetrins and going along the x-axis along the bottom we have the different age groups so 25 to 29, 30 to 34, 35 to 39 and so on increasing in five years in each group until we get to 90 to 94 um, where there's actually a 30 percent level uh, of people with dupetrins. So to put this back in smiley faces, um, if you look at all these smiley faces here in the 25 to 29 year old age group, as I call babies, um, you actually see, in their case, no instances of beatings. You then go up to the 30 to 34 year old and you have 2%. A 5 year range and still 2% in a 35 to 39 year old. 40 to 44 year olds, you have 3%. In the next lot, 4%, that's 45 to 59. In 50 to 54 year olds, um, again, it goes up and you've got 6%. In 
in the 59, 55 to 59 year olds, 1%, then 12% in the 60 to 64 year olds, and this is where it really starts to sort of jump up a little bit because you then have 15% in the 65 69, 16 10. 18% in the 75 to 79 year olds, 19% in the 80 to 84 year olds, and then 21% in the 85 to 89 year olds, and then in the 89 plus there was 30%. So clearly with age you do have an increased risk of developing these diseases, and that makes perfect sense to be honest with all things, as you get older there are increased risk because you've had more time to develop them, so it makes perfect sense. So basically, uh, if you have either later host disease or Dupuytren's disease, or you have a family history of viral diseases, you're at an increased risk. If you're a diabetic, or you drink excess alcohol, you smoke, or you suffer from epilepsy, epilepsy, or indeed if you're just old, then you have increased risk of developing Dupuytren's, and I'm then assuming by association also later host disease. <coughs>